the at the climate in terms of the for the available energies which are trapped in the atmosphere whether they are either they are coming to the source to the earth or they are not reaching to the earth it depends on depends on the olr outgoing long wave radiation it was already trapped by the aerosols clouds ozone and greenhouse gases so in that what we want to study is exclusively the clouds so as i pointed out several times humanospheric activity always depends on the what type of science you want to do to understand the the population we who are here to understand them what we what they required in the coming days what type of data we need to take and how we have to interpret how best we can give the outputs to the mankind so that the uh, comfortable and easy life for the societal activity may may be here so if you see the entire cartogram in the entire cartogram we can understand that we have the terrains back, back side and we are having the largely uh, urban area and we are having the clouds and also the greenery is there and we are having the small herds we are having the rivers we are having the ocean so for this to understand this we need to have several instrumentation among them we have nilan prasnana edina okay aka kada aka kada edina untade ledu kada we don't have any pointer okay it's okay so if you see we are having the uh, we are sending the rockets we are sending the rockets so we have a rocket sonde here so from uh, from the india metallurgical department they send the rockets into the atmosphere we have the uh, a, a radar a radio de detection and ranging which is giving the three dimensional view of the uh, vertical three dimensional view of the uh, troposphere stratosphere mesosphere and also hexosphere and we are having the lidar light detection and ranging which, which can sense the aerosols and we are also having a, a for hf radar to understand the oceanic surges what type of tides are there so and we have a suit of all the equipment to understand if there is a ship also the ship will go will when it is moving we will take the ship the exploration for the deep sea so deep sea exploration for sedimentation and other activity we will take and we have the satellites so these satellites the remote sensing satellites and the gps constellation satellites cosmic satellite what they give they will give the information on from top to bottom and for this will give all the ground based instrumentation will give from earth to uh, vertically but from the satellites we will get from the uh, from the top to bottom so if we can integrate this data and if we can mosaic the data if you use them making their field of view fot and also filling the beams uniformly then only we can get the proper results for our our purpose so this is the one of the best best suited activity for us so the temperature pressure large scale circulation pattern water vapor distribution sea surface temperature amount of cloud cloud fractions cloud uh, cloud albedo we can get every piece of information from this so ana potande ozone layer next to follow okay very nice so it is uh, very very important to understand the globally how these are all interconnected the response in the indian ocean is directly related to the pacific ocean and also vice versa pacific ocean is related on indian ocean these two oceans are connected with the atlantic ocean three gigantic oceans the oceanic activity what is going on is required we have to understand them either with the with the sea surface temperatures or using the quick scat 
or using the the data available from the cosmic uh, satellite formasat satellite and also other satellites we can study the long scale data the yearly scale data like such as iod indian ocean dipole and also el nino la nina and also mjo madan julian oscillations these are all required so these are all are happening due to the greenhouse effect and global warming these two are the key players for the change in the water vapor distribution and other activity this is only due to the greenhouse effect and the global warming which are caused due to the anthropogenic aerosols released by us and also the man made activity and the alteration of the uh, alteration of the uh, at the cutting of the forest and also paving of the roads and changing the uh, terrains removing the terrains for uh, for other purposes so this will make the imbalance so we have to be uh, take care of those things also so the for understanding this we need to measure all these parameters using the using the remote sensors or in situ measurements or the ground based radar system so these are the techniques available right now for understanding of this activity one is the radars optical we have the uh, lidars we have the in situ measurements like uh, balloon experiment rocket sonde experiment and so on and we have the uh, some of the airplanes will fit the uh, fxsp fast forward spectrometer so that it will have the uh, understanding the cloud constraints cloud droplets that will be very expensive so that's why we use all this experiment this experimental data is available on web free of cost we can use them and we can study and we have the other satellites we are here uh, we are having the team uh, spacecraft we are having the communication satellite these are all commercial purpose they may have some one or two sensors we have the trim tropical rainfall measuring mission we have the gpm the uh, gpm global precipitation mission so this is a, this all these uh, four images are taken from the uh, nasa website that's why i said image courtesy of the nasa so coming back to when we are talking of the global scale when we come back to india so india all the 12 months are divided into into four four seasons so the first column we have given as the climate and second column as the months so pre monsoon we are having march april and may and also in the pre monsoon may in the end of the may or mid may what will happen the dry to wet transition will occur precisely during the pre monsoon we will have the winds north easterly winds there that is blowing from land so you can see here so these are the uh, winds which are coming from the gigantic himalayan mountain so this will be flowing from land to the ocean so summer or the southwest monsoon this is one of the best monsoons for entire uh, south asia june july august september south west to northeast transition will occur in the october northeast or post monsoon november and early december so winter in kadapa we don't have winter but less summer late december january and february so you can see here usually this will be happening because of the equator if you see here from the equator here the coriolis force or the cyclonic activity will be anti of this uh, cyclic so that's why here we will we'll call the gigantic cloud system as the cyclones so here it will be rotating like this here it will be rotating like this so the intertropical convergence zone that is called the one of the moisture which is coming from this southern hemisphere if you see the clouds the clouds will move along with the background motion of the winds prevailing winds whichever direction it is moving the the cloud will also move in that direction so these clouds will move uh, from it will march towards north it will look always for the for the lighter medium so it will be moving 
then once it moves to the himalayas what will happen it hits the himalayas himalayas being a gigantic mountains of uh, order of 6 km this cloud have no strength to go out of back of the himalaya mountain it will be getting back the getting back we call sometimes as the retreated monsoon or the north northeast monsoon so for this kind of marches based on the india meteorological department we have we have classified them into pre monsoon monsoon and uh, the uh, post monsoon and winter season so for this purpose what we did is at yogi vemana university we have also made into four four parts one is the uh, this is the basically from the isro ministry of earth science apcast space physics laboratory recently we got the nrsc also uh, nrsc project is also one is there so we got all these projects from means severe thunderstorm observations and regional modeling is sponsored by ministry of earth science and we are having the race radio atmosphere and ionospheric study experiment race village information system over kadapa and nellore and national central taiwan they have donated some of the equipment and we are also having the recently thunderstorm observations uh, system uh, from the uh, nrsa so basically we take this 1 2 3 4 and 5 for understanding of the of the uh, geoscience what is happening across across the local scale we take the local scales what will happen being the kadapa it is the in the uh, semi arid zones so it is one of the natural laboratory where we can carry out the experiment because Uh, if go to the tirupati they have the more uh, northeast monsoon whereas we are well balanced with the uh, in terms of uh, uh, semi arid uh, zone semi arid zone will be classified based on the three parameters one is the available moisture other one is the temperature and third one is the spells of the rainfall so these three criterion has met by the by the our place so that's why it is the semi arid zone and uh, we are having the uh instrumentation the one is the super computing facility we have radar we have other equipment we have the gps receivers and also we are having the village information system we are having the uh automatic weather stations we are having climatic stations and we have these are the publications and other things given in the x axis but it is not visible to you hopefully uh we we have given uh, where, where our group has published along with me several persons are working we have published 202 myself i have published the 96 papers and care journals we are having 34 textbooks 5 and national international we are submitted 100 the papers so 100 each and also phd 16 phds are maybe put in our company and so our group is doing i believe fairly good in terms of uh, uh, research activity so we'll co come back to the our research activity here so we are in india this is the topography uh, of the uh, uh, gadrinchi and this is our kadapa and also we can see here kadapa uh, these are the populations we can see what what type of population we are having and this is the terrain and this is the uh, andhra map so from this what we want to emphasize is the pursuit of experiments we are shown here this is the wind vane and the, this is the anemometer this is sonic anemometer rain gauge and we are having the uh, parachute to see the wind direction and we are having the uh, pyrometer and other instruments for dry and wet bulb temperatures and we have the uh, in situ measurements as well as the automatic weather station also so that we can uh, uh, get the in for point measurements along with the point measurements what we will take we will go for the uh, for the aerial measurements also the advantage of the point measurements are very accurate because we take the eyeball observation and consistency and long term disadvantage is because they, they measure only at one point and also on the, on the surface so it is not the representative in other place because 
rain is a parameter temporal uniformity is not persistent with that so we are having the other instruments like uh, tetheran sonde and radio sonde gps sonde balloon sonde these are all uh, good for uh, understanding up to the middle atmosphere for the astronomy atmospheric science and also for engineering studies of the uh, geoscience so uh, one among the uh, these uh, results i want to say very 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 choosy results i have taken very salient features so we can see the x axis is the one day diurnal variation of a day and y axis is the height we are uh, particularly focusing on the convective boundary layer if you see that uh, on very clear days the the convective boundary layer evolution sir we can see in the morning this is the transition hours we can see in the early hours the sun hits the uh, earth then the air parcel will be moving up and up due to the turbulence mixing so you can see the raising of the boundary layer and in the around 16 hours or uh, the sunset will start slowly this will be dissipating and they due to the radiative cooling so they, they you cannot see the layer at all so this is uh, depending upon the uh, upon the the changes in the atmosphere uh, sorry the changes on the earth we can see sometimes the different structures we can see here so this is the this is one of the descent type and we can see the ascending only we can see here only the thermal plumes are here so depending upon the this uh, picture we can say what type of atmosphere was there what type of earth situation was there on that day we can very clearly find out we can see here very different layers inversion layers can be seen here so these inversion layers are persisting double layer is persisting if you take the radio zone day experiment are there you can see the in the troposphere the temperature will be decreasing by 6 degrees per per kilometer there there will be temperature increase these two points so these temperature inversions are causing them to have the multi layer and and also there is a possibility of the background some of the aerosols are mixing with them and they are trapping there and the layer was persisting for longer period and also we can do the back trajectory analysis and we can get them to understand so these are the information given there and this is during the clear day when we have rain what will happen so on rainy days the situation will be different so these are the uh, very easy way to get from the remote sensor we can use any remote sensor to get the information on the on the uh, boundary layer so if you understand the boundary layer we can understand the what type of activity is going in the uh, on the earth so that is one of the very very important parameter so we have to study and we have to understand for understanding of geoscience activity so we have also uh, started on uh, uh, incubation center uh, for mitigation of natural disaster at uh, yogi amna university in, 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 in for, in collaboration with the nrsc so we can, we can see that uh, updraft and downdraft uh, and the uh, rainfall information we can when there is a cloud when there is a thunderstorm how this will be behaving so we are having the thunderstorm here this is the one of the instrument to get the thunderstorm and lightning information and also this is the radar which can sense the information so you can fix them and we can produce the maps in andhra pradesh so on which date is there thunderstorm if the thunderstorm is there so how many thunder flashes are there how many times thunder was occurred so why we have to study the thunderstorm because thunderstorm is one of the, the best culprit for the papaya mango tomato so when there is a ripening season is there if the thunderstorm hits there will be some haze and the lot of rainfall is falling so these are going to cause the damage for the crop so if we can sense them if we can forecast them we, we can 
now cache them then definitely we are able to get the information on the uh, on the thunderstorms and also other natural disaster so we have taken the extreme temperature for indian region so this was the uh, basha has been this research he made the uh, natural scientific report nature scientific report he published he, uh, he was also from our research group so you can see that uh, the the distribution of the of the temperatures are very different you can see for, from year to year so this year rare heat events are there and you can see the these are the rare, rare cold events are here high so why some of the years we are having the less uh, temperature and the extreme temperatures are in other other years so this is uh, based on the the entire global scenario we are having the thar desert so the thar desert and also the the depending upon the anthropogenic activity and also if you see the years like the covid years there were not much heat was produced there was not much anthropogenic activity was happened so these are all one of the paramount important so we have to be careful to understand the based on the recent decadal witness of the highest uh, heat waves so we need to focus much on the their precipitation what will happen in the precipitation if you take into the decadal activity how this were all forcing them in the in the indian subcontinent you can see in the indian subcontinent for the years with 1986 to 2005 so this had a different we have the highest rainfall during the planino years if you see here this is in the summer mass summer and this is in the winter you can see so we can see the change very effectively so this is the 2080 this was predicted 2090 so there is a prediction of this are different from the here so the difference we can get about 5 degrees we are going to get in 2090 uh, we are going to get the that difference of nearing to 5 degrees and a given particular place not all over the globe so if it is going to happen what will happen to our uh, our uh, atmospheric system our atmospheric system is going to be get uh, depleted and uh, the all the glaciers are going to be melt and ice is going to be melt and it will be running off into the oceans then ocean uh, level will be increasing on ocean rises then the the places like uh, chennai and the places like the netherlands they, they are uh, they are already below 16 meters mean sea level so there will be very chaotic activity is going to happen so we need to be carefully understand the the importance of uh, temperature and its uh, effect on the precipitation so for these purposes we need to understand the the atmosphere and the hydrosphere and the hydrological cycle in in association with the earth cycle so summary in the background we are having the drought we are having the air pollution we are having the cyclones we are having the lightning and thunderstorm so for this what we did we have we are having the equipment to get the point measurements we get the meso scale measurements we can take the mosaic of the data into the uh, continental scale and use the data use the appropriate climate models use the appropriate remote sensing models and we can predict the the cyclones so we have predicted one of the cyclone here and we can predict the hailstorm also we can study the thunder uh, thunderstorms also so we using these so we can study the temperature pressure humidity wind speed wind direction rainfall and the natural disasters like uh, thunderstorms 
and the excessive rainfall convective storms monsoon and other other natural disasters so it is the uh, our goal to go for more accurate nowadays the entire globe whatever we are doing the experiment they are accurate by the about half a day or less than hours so we have to look for the for the climate climatological value up to a month a month before we have to predict when we are going to get the rainfall when we are going to get the thunderstorm when we are going when where and everything must be precisely we have to show and we have to be more accurate to to get the informations for the well being of the society so i am very much thankful to the uh, i am very much thankful to to professor v sunita professor k raghubabu professor g sudarshan raju professor n j raju uh, dr s rinwas gaud and dr siddhi raju for giving me this opportunity to share a brief ideas of what we have to do for the for understanding of the uh, geoscience in terms of uh, atmospheric uh, atmosphere so what we can do for the coming years also we have to integrate the instrumental data and satellite data and observational data modeling data into the multidisciplinary so that we we can get more better informations better observables hopefully this may give hope for us to understand the the hydrological cycle and also the the environment its environment and uh, we can have the well being of the society hopefully we can uh, reduce the uh, some of the diseases also based on this and our thank you thank you very much thank you sir uh, any questions are there it's a kind of interactive session Namaste, sir. Hello. 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 Kumar is speaking. Hello. 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 Tell me. Hello. Tell me, Anil Kumar. Anil Kumar. Hello. Hello. Sir Ahmed Bashar. Sir Ahmed Bashar. Sir, Namaste, sir. Hello, Ahmed Bashar. Old student, retired groundwater. <laughs> Uh, employee, uh, sir, Krishna Reddy sir, 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 Okay, shape lab on any time. Students are full under the first road to the Nijasaro. Climate good of Brahana Mundasan and seventy two years ago, I was two and a half years ago. Hello, sir. Chapande, Chapande, ah, my Manji climate change, sir. In go the geology department also, this program that we have, my ro, seven go go to watch. Manji, sir, my ro activity, activity ka palgaram manji chala, kopagaram sir, this 
సార్ ఒక చిన్న డౌట్ సార్ అట్మాస్ఫియర్ మీద చెప్పండి సార్ సార్ అట్మాస్ఫియర్ చేంజ్ కానీ కాన్స్టెంట్ కానీ ఉండేదానికి ఏజెంట్స్ ఏం యాక్ట్ చేస్తాయి దాని మీద హలో సార్ సార్ యువర్ 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 వాయిస్ ఇస్ నాట్ ఆడుబుల్ ఇనిషియలీ వాట్ యు హావ్ ఫేస్ అస్ ఎవరీథింగ్ వాస్ వెరీ క్లియర్ వెన్ యువర్ క్వశ్చన్ కి వన్ థింగ్ సార్ ఐ సిన్సియర్లీ అప్రిషియేట్ యు ఐ విల్ వి విల్ లివ్ యాస్ పర్ యువర్ ఎక్స్‌పెక్టేషన్ maybe you can type the question i will give my email id sir i will answer because uh, that may be audio disturbance i am getting my trip echo back to me some of my maybe the ict facility is good but i am may I'm, i may not be better good user of it ante nenu cheppina mundu cheppina sir one more time if possible gareth will give this one sir ఇంతకుముందే చెప్పింది thank you so much uh, for your uh, talk on remote sensing of atmosphere and uh, you have uh, nicely covered what is the motivation and background of the topic what are the control measures of the atmosphere and, uh, what are the research activities of the sark center and you have clearly mentioned about the incubation center for mitigation of natural disaster at yogam university thank you so much for your uh, valuable time hello ha balu sir balu nan swami anu tachu check it Nallu Swami sir, are you there? Yes ma'am, good morning, oh. very good morning, I'm here. Yes sir, sir. Very good morning to you sir. Uh, now welcome to the, are you ready with the PPT sir? Yes ma'am, yes, okay. yes. Okay. But only the video is not yeah. on, uh, turning uh, sir, on. Uh, uh, we made you the co-host. Uh, could you able to present the PPTs or shall we do that? No ma'am, from here I'll do it. Yeah. I'm sharing now. Okay, okay. Before that, we had to introduce, no, sir? Okay. Yeah, yes, ma'am. First, let, first yes. let us, uh, yeah, let yes. us, uh, yeah. see whether okay. it's visible okay. or not. Okay. I am uh, sad, but... Uh, may I request uh, Professor Raghu Babu, sir, visible? to introduce uh, Dr. Nandu Swami, sir. Madam, madam, first, first. Madam. Yes, sir. May I be please visible or not? Hello? May I be please visible or not? PPT, we could not see, sir. Sorry.
I already shared it, madam. Okay, okay, okay. It's visible or not? Yeah, uh, could you please share, sir? Yes, madam. I already shared, madam. Already shared, but uh, we could not see, sir. One hour, sir. Uh, sir, could you share it once again? Uh, sir, could you log out and then come back? Hello, Babu, sir. Yeah. Madam, I'm choosing. Uh, madam? Not yet, sir. I'm see, madam, I'm sitting and I'm sharing. Oh. Okay. Now? Starting, madam, from my side, showing. Okay, but we could not see. Maybe, yeah. Okay, then what is the time? We'll wait, sir. One second. Maybe due to internet issues, sir. Uh, maybe slow. We will wait for a few minutes.
Uh, uh, sir, could you move the slides? No, madam. Light is moving, madam. No, maybe the internet at your place may be a little bit slow, or some difficulty might be there. That's normal. That's normal. That's normal. Yeah, That's yeah. why I'm uh, okay. seeing alternate is just move. Uh, sir, can we do one thing? Uh, could you share your PPT to my mail? Yes, madam. Oh. Progressing, madam. I am parallel I'm doing that also. Oh. Parallel I am doing that also, madam. Pardon me, sir. I am not clear. Yes, madam. I am sharing, sharing that one. Okay. okay. Your, uh... oh. Share that. Am I am able? Hello, madam. Am I able? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ask madam to check the, her uh, WhatsApp message. There, it's already downloaded. I mean, I shared my PPT. Yeah, you, you have shared the PPT. I'm sending you this. Uh, Yes, I'm doing. Madam, did you receive? Yeah, but it's, uh, it's downloading, sir. It takes two. Okay, madam. Because of that, uh, uh, size is very yeah. big. Uh. Okay, it happens. Uh.
Madam, I'm edible now. Sir, nice to see you. Madam, I'm edible. Yes, yes. You are audible, sir. Visible too. We are uh, trying to share your Yes, madam. Okay. Download it, right? Hope you have downloaded it. Meanwhile, we can introduce you. Yes, madam. Now, may I request uh, Professor Rakhpabu, sir, to introduce uh, Dr. Balun Alusami, sir, Center of Health of Karnataka. Thank you, madam. Good morning, all. Welcome, Dr. Babu Nalasamy, sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Babu Nalasamy, sir, is currently working as an assistant professor at the Central University of Karnataka, Kala Burgi, Karnataka. Uh, he has also worked uh, with the uh, Cochin University of uh, Science and Technology as lecturer uh, and uh, Indian Rare Earth, uh, Rare Earth Limited as a petrologist. Uh, having done his graduation in uh, geology from National College of Trichy, Tamil Nadu, he has joined Cochin University of Science and Technology Cochin Kerala for his <laughs> master's specialization in marine geology. He was conferred with the CSIR net GRF uh, later on uh, pursued PhD in geology from National Institute for Inter Interdisciplinary Science and Technology awarded by University of Kerala. Uh, he has 15 years of teaching and uh, a total 15 years of research and industrial experience in India. He has published more than 30 research papers in national and international peer-reviewed journals for his credit. He has given four invited lectures in the workshops and national conferences conducted by various universities in India. On his international contribution, he has visited Australia to deliver a talk on uh, impacts of tsunami on uh, minerals in the uh, international conference conducted by ICAM Brisbane, Australia in the year 2008. Also delivered talk on petrology and X-ray uh, mineralogy of uh, uh, Cretaceous of uh, Arielur group of uh, carbonate fossils of Tirchirapalli succession, Tamil Nadu, India, conducted by the uh, Paleontological Paleontological Research and Education Center, uh, Mahasarakram University, Thailand, in the year to 2022. Apart uh, uh, he has one among the editor of uh, uh, edited volume entitled Geochemistry and Minerals of uh, Coastal Sediments in Tamil Nadu, India. He published a book entitled Laterite Mineralogy and Geochemistry. He is also a reviewer, reviewer for many international journals. His research intrigue is uh, uh, in the field of mineralogy, laser minerals, uh, marine geology, paleontology, paleoclimate, petrology, fluid inclusion studies. Uh, Current, currently, he is a fellow of Geo, Geological Society of India. Now, uh, I hand over my to uh, Dr. Babu Naluswamy, sir. Please, sir. Thank you very much for the introduction, sir. Thank you very much. Madam, I'm edible. Madam, I'm edible. 
you are audible sir audible visible but the thing is uh, we are unable to download your ppts just we are doing uh, uh, could you share to ict geology geology ict 2020 at gmail.com i'll text the message yeah. uh, yes madam i will what will yeah. do uh, yeah. yeah i will uh, using that id i will send and I will try my just some open here itself uh, once again. Huh? And I don't know uh, what is happening. Uh, sir, just now I have sent a, a text message uh, stating about the uh, Gmail account. Could you send that uh, to that? Yes, but then now I'm yeah. checking. Uh, checking. Will come within two minutes. Mm -hmm. Madam. Yes. Yes. With this, with this view. The email what you have given is this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It has come. We will. We are downloading it. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I think now you could see the screen of your PPTs. Yes. But ask them to go for the uh, uh, slides. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but but please proceed. This is, uh, that's why I had this online uh, <laughs> uh, teaching as well as online meeting on all matter because of the technical, uh, which always give trouble to us. It will. Uh, Okay, anyway, madam, uh, sorry for the uh, technical. It's okay, uh, sir. It's okay. Part of yeah. that. Sincere apologies from our side, too. Yes. Thank yes. you, sir. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, and thank you, madam, for the introduction. And uh, uh, first of all, a uh, very good morning to you all. Uh, sir, one thing uh, when you would like to go to the next slide, you just say next slide, we will do that. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Okay. Yes, madam. So before I uh, start my talk, just I congratulate the team, especially Sumita Madam and his organizing team uh, for this wonderful uh, workshop um, uh, which we are conducting at your end. And uh, the topic which you have been chosen is a timely needed, especially that a recent trends on geoscience. Uh, what are the research uh, going, uh, new research, otherwise the interesting research which is going on across the country, as well as across the nation, as well as across the globe, okay, we can able to understand through this um, uh, common platform. So the, I also uh, took this topic, uh, I mean, in connection with that workshop, that is nothing but geoscience research in India. So the, this is a general thing. So this is not a research on law. So since it's a recent research, what is happening? So I would like to share with the research community as well as academic community, especially research scholars and students. Because the PG students are our backbone who will I mean, carry out the research uh, for the national development. So that could be the reason I have chosen this topic. Though it's a generalized topic, but many of the research which is not come across by the students as well as the researchers they'll come to know. 
So with this introduction, uh, uh, let me move to uh, next uh, slide. Okay. So I already told that this is focus. Uh, this talk is really focused on uh, our emphasis on the research. So what is meant by research? Especially the research scholars and uh, students should have. It. Okay. So that can be find any answer to the things that are unknown. Because already known is not a research. Something unknown or if you are finding a new concept that is innovative. Okay, that is search. But things are unknown but already some research has done or some work has been done to fill the gaps in knowledge, to understand the complexities of the problem and disprove the lies. Because just for an example, I'm quoting this. The globe now, the earth shape is we are calling that as a spiroidal ellipsoid. But when the science starts, the people say it's a flat because since we are living on the earth, we don't know. Because we are walking on the road, it's a flat now. If you go to the edge of some place, only you will come to know some slopes are there. So, they, according to there, that time, the science and the developments are not progressing that much level if you compare with now. So, they said that it's a flat. Then they said that it's a round. But as of now, what is happening? Likewise, if you compare the planets just 10 years before, or 15 years before, we, as per our knowledge, there are nine planets. Then all of a sudden it went to 10. Now, came down to eight. So to disprove lies or prove the truth, one should able to do the research. That we should consist of purpose of the study, type of the investigation, what type of investigation you have to carry out and the extent of the researcher's interference based on what you have done both in field as well as the laboratory, you should interpret, then you should study the settings and the unit of the analysis, what more? So if you want to know the what about the mineral given to you is unknown, so you have to set the unit of the analysis and time horizon is also very important. We cannot take long time for the research. We want to prove something or disprove something. Many people are there in queue. They may not be able to steal your idea, but the idea which you are having, the same thing they may also get it sometime later. So, whatever you want to or whatever you would like to express to the international community or the scientific community, you have to execute it in time. Next slide, please. So, in this slide, what you are seeing is the leading research institute which are present in India. Only the leading institute as an example I have given doesn't mean all other institutes are not less than this institute. But why especially I focus this, many of the state universities or private colleges or government degree colleges, the students are not aware about these many institutes because these are the national institutes used to get a huge fund for the research. So students can approach them for their dissertation work or their internship work through the proper channel, then they will get an experience, they will get an more knowledge. What are the recent research are going on 
and their respective laboratory. So they'll come across. So even, even nowadays also, private or aided, government aided college, my colleague friends are still there working the very basic research. It's not a mistake of them. It's not a mistake of them because of the lack of facilities, lack of fund, they are unable to buy a sophisticated equipment for their new research. That is the reason I am emphasis on this institute. If you go there, if you allow the students to pursue their internship or project work or after the completion of the degree, they can just start their career as a project fellow or research fellow. They will get an overall idea about the recent research or recent trend on the geoscience. For example, like in Kota, National Institute of Oceanography, which is, I mean, it's a, this one all one of the constitution of the CSAR, Council, Council for, I mean, Council of Science and Industrial Research. One of the pioneer research institute, which is present in India or across India, they are carrying out research on, especially oceanography, geological oceanography, biological oceanography, chemical oceanography, physical oceanography, and engineering oceanography, and remote sensing, etc., geophysics, etc. And you will wonder that if you give a visit to that institute, they are having all the sophisticated equipments for the latest research or recent research. Reason means what? Whatever the leftover, the idea leftover, not pursued by the scientists or the lack of the work, what not happened, that they are doing and will get a chance to work with them. Similarly, the National Ge Geophysical Research Institute, NGRI, which is situated in Hyderabad, Opal Road, they are also a pioneer. They do research on continental because for you to understand the plate tectonics or what are the mineralization or mineral mineral zones which present in the plate tectonic or the subduction zones or mid oceanic ridges for the normal people. Normal people means the fund which we are getting less institute not able to do it. But these are the institute they are having their own ship research vessels. They can go to their places and they can do the deep drilling and they'll get a core, very long core from that MOR or subduction zone or deep oceans like abyssal plains and after coming to the laboratory by doing all the geochemical analysis, paleoclimate studies and what are the minerals present in the particular the greater depth? How the plates are moving? So n number of research one could do with the help of one one single core. There is a benefit of working with the National Institute funded by the Central Government of India. Like that NIOT, they are doing the same what they are doing to NIO, National Institute of Oceanography, but they are much working on the technology to carry out the, some of the research, what are the equipments are there, they want, so that also they are doing. The National Center for the Earth Science Studies, they are concentrating on core continental research, Hydrosphere research, biosphere research, even, even in our institute, I have mentioned our CEP, Central Institute of Karnataka. During the COVID, we have not innovated any vaccine, but we have established their COVID lab. After finding 
the difficulty is faced by the localites. So we have got a fan as well as our honorable vice chancellor says he is very keen to so give us, I mean, extend our service to the general public. So that also comes under the reason trend on the geoscience or general science. Like that, the polar and the ocean researchers, NCPOR, National Center for Polar and Ocean Research, they are doing a wonderful research on polar regions, especially Arctic and Antarctic. They have established their own laboratory, our Indian laboratory is there, international laboratory is there. So in that international laboratory, India got one space. So all these research scholars and scientists, they are frequently give visit to take the core samples from the deep ice core or ice, the polar regions. And they are working on paleo climate studies and climate change studies with the help of this ice. Because whatever the greenhouse produce on the earth, finally it reaches to the polar by means of the cycling. So the carbon what, the amount of carbon which we have emitted through our day-to-day -day activities or industrialization, etc., they are also to record. So you can take a lake sediments and core sediments from the polar <coughs> and you can compare how much amount of the greenhouse gases has been emitted by means of the natural as well as anthropogenic activity and how the global is getting warm. So this kind of studies they're there. One of the proxy Olympic, many people are working. We started working, best work we have started working by means of the micro paleontology. So we are delineating or we are reconstructing the paleo climate with the help of one core and with the core we'll retrieve the foraminiferous and other microfossils and with the help of oxygen, oxygen isotope and carbon isotope one can understand about the carbon accumulations. Then we can go for the ratio and the ratio will give what about the climate of early and now. How we change? What are the parameters and criteria or the factor affected the climate that and all we can then. So not only with the help of ice core, we can use even sediments also with it. <coughs> Just sediments. Go for the dating and you can say. Then in, in Institute of Minerals and Materials Technology of Bhuvaneshwar, Ministry of Earth Science, Delhi, Indian National Center for Ocean Information Service, Hyderabad, all are doing a wonderful work in all the sector, especially our geological or geoscience. Then apart from all the IITs, they are also very pioneer. Why I am using that word, word as a pioneer? The funding is enormous if you come up with the other central universities and state university and the uh, universities. So then and now they buy the latest technology, the equipments. By next slide or next to next slide, the equipments or instruments, yes, I mean instruments, which is relevant to our geoscience, I'm going to talk, that time I will explain. Now, the geoscience research carried out in the, that's what I'm, uh, I'm connecting this both the early slide and this slide. So all the institute, whatever work they are doing, whatever I express in a with that, they are working for the oil exploration, manganese nodules, even still my close friend scientist at Anivago. Hello. Hello. Madam, I am audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, some intervention has kind of failed. So, so my friend, he is working on the manganese nodules. The nodal are the manganese and other ferromanganese elements, which presence in terms of nodules are called as manganese nodules. It is economically highly significant. Economically highly significant. That is. Sir, sorry really to interrupt you. Uh, your talk will be for another 20 to 30 minutes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Oh, thank you, sir. Another 20 minutes. 32 oh, or 20 to 30 minutes. Thank you. Okay. So before eleven thirty, I have to wind up. Am I correct? Hello. So before eleven thirty, I have to wind up. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possible. Very, very possible. I mean, otherwise, I know other things. I'll skip later of stage. So, so even uh, the institute has given a very good, huge fund to extend. For the manganese, manganese nodules. Why, in the sense, still we are in need of rare metals, rare earth metals like cobalt, nibidium, which are all deadly record for the space industry and electronics and the electro electric industry. So, that is the reason they are doing the work still. And fluid inclusion studies. So, answers, I mean, in short, answers as a center for air science studies, the NGRA, and almost uh, across the country, the IITs, many are working on the fluid inclusion studies. Even I have done my postdoc fellow, I mean, RA ship, through RA ship. I have the whole one year. I worked on these fluid inclusion studies. It's a very interesting field. For that, laser uh, Raman spectroscopes are very important. Because of, in order to know about the, the formation of the rock, what we are studying, which form the greater depth, one cannot enter into that much deep proportion. So, with the help of the indirect method, that means fluid inclusion studies. Fluid inclusion is nothing but all uh, no. But I will explain once again. A bubble which trapped inside the atomic structure of the mineral is known as fluid inclusion. That inclusion may be a gas or solid or liquid. And with the help of that, because this in fluid inclusion, it will trap inside the atomic structure of the particular mineral when it will crystallize, the same time it will enter. So, both the temperature and pressure of the formation is unique, uniform. So, if you study the fluid inclusion, one can understand about the, the temperature and pressure of the formation of the rock at which depth it form easily we can understand so this will help to delineate the pressure and temporal deformation of the rock and mineral so these are the very good interesting studies can be done with the help of the laser uh, i mean laser raman laser spectroscopy as well as the micro thermometry micro thermometry method that means the equipment's name called lingam freezing and heating stage and placer deposits placers are very important how now each and every country is looking for their mineral wealth still we are exploration is going on still exploitation going on because of the the country growth is depends on the mineral wealth so, what are the mineral surpluses in the rock? The same or in the land, the same amount of rare earth and etc. mineral surpluses in the placer. So, if you mine, especially ilmenite, zircon, rute, these are all one among the very important minerals in terms of the economical significance. 
At the same time, monocyte also very important. Uranium and monocyte. Now we have uranium in some part of India, but we have monocyte along the place of us, especially the west coast and east coast. We have two very great deposits. In West Coast, Chaura, Kerala, they are having monocytes. At the same time, in East Coast also, Ganjam districts of Odisha and Manavala Kuruchi of Tamil Nadu, both the stretch, we are getting bulk quantity of monocyte. Because of why I am emphasis on this, now we are moving towards the nuclear energy, clear energy. Because the thermal, using thermal energy, we are producing from the coal. Still, if you are using the coal, we are talking about the climate, pure climate, global warming. But if still if you are using thermal, using coal, it's polluting the environment. So, what is required? To run a nuclear energy, we need uranium as well as monocyte. Monocyte is nothing but the mineral. Monocyte is a min nothing but the mineral. The passport of cerium yttrium. So we'll recover that cerium yttrium from monocyte, and uranate is a ore mineral for uranium so we'll extract both the metals and which will help for it will act as a feeder fission fusion or feeder for the fission fusion and we'll get a nuclear energy so the atomic mineral exploration division they are looking after this and the placer mineral like uh, IRE Indian Rare Earth Limited KMM Kerala Metals and Mineral Limited of Kerala, they are pioneering this. And Atomic Mineral Exploration Division, the directorate, they are not only doing this, but they are focused on locate the atomic minerals. That will what that will helpful for what just I spoke. Then economic inclusive zone studies, mineral resource assessment, airborne, conducting multiferous geo technical geo environmental natural ozone studies, glaciology. And bathymetric survey, bathymetric survey is nothing but the bottom, mapping the bottom of the ocean is called bathymetric survey. It will give a, a limelight on how the topograph of the ocean is there. But why? For one single if you want to lay a cable between, I mean, fiber optical cable between India and Singapore, or India and Malaysia, <coughs> India and Gulf countries, India and Australia. <coughs> Through the sky, you can't. <coughs> Excuse me. But through the bottom of the ocean, it's possible. That cable can be laid through the bottom of the ocean. Further, you have to understand the route. <coughs> what is presence beneath the ocean from the right from the continental margin? The surface are plain, or some any mounts are there, or hillocks are present, valleys are present. What route I am going to? lay the cable to access high speed internet that can be done with the geological technique or remote searching technique with the help of this all the surveys <coughs> for example side scan sonar triple s eco sounder multi side scan sonar fit with the bottom of the business vessels and do this survey 
This is not a new technique. It's a old technique, but I'm still a technique. I'm quoting the example, but the laying cables on a new, newly new concept. So still our, because if anybody is approaching you for this work, marine survey, I, I want to get a marine survey, or I want to do this work, what techniques are required? You can tell. Not only you can tell, if you are good in survey, yes, write a proposal or get a project or get a consented service, yes, I will, I could do. So if you know this survey, this kind, these are the techniques, so you can help the surveys which record for the people. Then climate studies and all I will talk. Next slide, please. Yeah, this and all, almost I talk what are the main work and all. You can straight away go to the uh, equipments, instruments. Please move. So what are the uh, work or uh, what are the research, uh, uh, work, I mean, built by this uh, institute? Most of the work I already uh, told and a uh, few are uh, there. Hydrocarbon fluid inclusion, everything I said. Western courts, active subdivision zones. I already talked on this aspect and all. Please, you can move. Move the slide. I request you to change the slide, please. Yeah, next slide. See, uh, NAO, NAO also I told, the archaeological work they are doing, continental margin, coral reef, coral reef work is very, very important because the coral is a one among the tool or proxy we are using for the climate studies, especially to reconstruct the paleo climate. So, so monitoring the uh, coral uh, surveillance using the robot. See, the reason we are introducing the technology, recent technology for the recent geoscience. So that's the reason I said that. These are one of the uh, new technique, robot. We are sending the automatic robot to monitor the coral reefs or to monitor the volcanic eruptions. Okay, yes, please move. So they are right from beginning itself they started because we want to do the research on the marine. You one cannot always depends on the private vehicles. So whether the budget is high or not, initially we have to put our capital amount to buy a natural equipment or what are the things that are required for your research. You have to buy then only. You can come up with a great idea. You can come up with a great outcome. So investment is very, very important. That's the reason of our we have a 500 plus national institutes. All are having very good equipment, research equipment for the high level research. Move please. Slide move please. Yeah, please, you, you can move. It's not an issue. Straight away go to that. Uh, uh, yeah, please move it. Because I have only another 20 minutes. Yeah. No, no, no. Little. Friend, friend. No, equipment. One equipment is there. The instrumentation page is there. Move forward please. No, no. Okay, okay, okay. Um, it may come after this. Yes, yes, you yes, stop this. So let me talk about the sediment core. Even Madam, Suntha Madam, she over on many environmental related, uh, environmental polluted, pollu uh, polluted or pollution related work on groundwater and uh, sediments. So uh, she must uh, uh, definitely aware about the uh, importance of the sediment core. See, by taking a single sediment core, one can work on almost all our geological field. You can study on the mineralogy. What are the new minerals are there? Sir, what, why you are telling a new mineral? People can ask. See, if you take a sediment from the lake, especially the top lake, one mineral name called glocophin. 
one mineral known called glucosin. So glucosin, okay, with the help of uh, the glucosin, uh, one can understand that it is a newly formed mineral or old because glucosin easily it will get weathered, it will transform to another state. For example, holite, holocyte, that is also clay mineral. Immediately, if the temperature above 60, it will not retain its state. It will move to one state to another state. So, if you go get the particular samples of minerals in the core sediment, which what depth you encountered, so you can tell the sediments are new or the sediments are old. Then Jacob's tree also will give clue about this origin or the provenance of the particular sediments and paleoclimate studies, then sedimentology, the sediment, with the help of the pattern of the sediments, one can say the mode of depositions, the rate of depositions, and the transport of the deposition, etc. etc. So there are several techniques are there to collect the core sediments. There are gravity corer, box corer, piston corer, Weber corer, and Van Wien gram. So if you want to study the stratigraphy, the vertical core, then you have to choose the gravity core, box core, piston core, and Viber, I mean, uh, Viber core. Especially this gravity core and box core are very safe, and you can get a bulk quantity of the bottom sediments from the lake or offshore. Because with the help of that, only we are going to delineate all the aspects. Tell me, please. So these are the the technic students of CUK Central University of Karnataka. They are collecting the core sample from the lake using core. This is a this is not a mechanized one. You can say it's a normal core using normal. PVC cube or PVC pipe. Thus, you have to that budget is very less only. You don't need to buy a core, I mean a piston core and etc. But depends on your depth, interest. Just to, from the surface, one to two meter depth sediment is more than sufficient for your study. You can go for this. Otherwise. You have to go for box corer or gravity corer. Box corer or gravity corer. So it will go up to even a greater depth. For that, research vessels are required. It's very essential. And your budget is very high. If you have a, your own project, then you can collect the code for what the work I studied. I mean, say, please move, please. This is a People without a without floater, if it is a short, the depth is shallow, then you can go for the right, the right, you see the right figure, the uh, depth is very less, they are taking risky only, but they are collecting the short core from the lake. Yeah, next slide, please move the slide, I request you to move the slide. Yeah, please. I mean, these are the uh, website. Uh, if you want to go uh, uh, in detail about the fiber corer, with the help of fiber corer, how uh, the scientists are collecting sediment samples from the core, I mean, uh, lake and etc. So, if interested people can use this. Please. Yeah, these are the water samples. You can collect the water from the uh, lake or uh, oceans. So many types are there. There are land drone water samplers, timber water samplers, conductive timber, I mean temperature depth sensor. In short, we people will say conductivity, temperature, and depth CDT sensor. So just use this and immerse. So one can get a total uh, temperature and depth and the conductivity with the help of these samples. Yes.
you can move the slide. Yeah, here. So these are the the equipments. What I said for our geological research. Only ICPMS not there. Only A is there. A is atomic absorption spectroscopy. But limited elements only can get it from this AS. Then later on, the scientists they come up with came up with this ICPMS inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry. Just uh, you with the help of the mineral powder rock, which you would like to get the detailed geochemistry of that. Just powder it and convert it into the liquid using the procedure. And just put it inside this ICPMS. So there will be a plasma will generate it, and the liquid form of the mineral will introduce in that plasma. So ionization will happen. So the director will find the atomic structure of the ionization, I mean of the metals which is get released from the rock, then according to geochemistry will be given. Maybe if it is present in the percentage, it will give in terms of percentage or PPM level. Then next level of research, they went and they came up with LA, laser ablation ICPMS, then multi-collector. So after see first start with the AS, before AS, all the analysis we have done with the wet laboratory. Then AS, then ICPMS. See the stage of stage of the development in our geoscience. Then MC ICPMS. What is the difference between these two LA and MC? Multi collector. It will collect the ions precisely, and we can go for dating. For example, strontium and rubidium, rare. Metals are present in your rock or the mineral or any other substance. It will direct the direction limit is very precious and very sharp. Here, this laser ablation also can be done, but plus or minus 150 years. If you want to know about the age of the particular area where you collect that rock, it will give plus or minus plus or minus 150. Years, I mean million years. But if, with the help of the MC ICPMS, the error. Yes, yes, I'm reaching. Yeah, yeah. Could you please? Yeah. Uh, then XRF, AISM, QIMSCAN. These are very good uh, recent development. Uh, the QIMSCAN is quantitative evaluation of materials by scanning electron microscope. Then EPMA, electron pro microscope. Okay. Then IRMS, this is for to study the isotope ratio. Then these are for dating. Shrimps and tins are for the dating. Yeah. You can move. Yeah, okay. These are the studies, placer, deposit, coastal geology, mineral, sedimentology, groundwater, etc. etc. Fluid inclusion and paleontology and micropaleontology, related work, I mean um, paleoclimate studies, tsunami. So these are the kinds of work. Are uh, readily started, and uh, people are uh, they are doing the work on these aspects. Even uh, why specifically I have uh, kept this so this one all enter this field I work and uh, whatever I'm showing, and I have publications also. So to, to promote the uh, young scientists and uh, young researchers, so just uh, to uh, insisting them to motivate them i have a place here yeah the, yeah this on all what i said this work i have carried out and detail i have given you can move this next slide please move yes yes these are the uh, samples of how they have collected i have also collected four samples along the coastal uh, area of the kerala please move next slide please these are the uh, field visit given during the uh, tsunami. Yeah, especially along the coastal uh, belt of Kerala. And with the help of the same, so people say how the impact of tsunami, uh, especially on the minerals. 
people question. Even in fact, my guy also first question: How it is possible to uh, distinguish or differentiate between uh, tsunami mineral or pre-tsunami affected uh, minerals and uh, post? So with the help of the SEM, even SEM EDAX is helping us. So we got a publication. So we uh, uh, got a uh, 2.5 impact factor, and it mostly rated as well as cited by the uh, researchers, especially this paper. Yeah, please, next slide, please. Yeah, these are uh, um, investigation of the placer, uh, buried places. This also got published. Yeah. If please you move, move ahead. These, these are related to the uh, river places and uh, these are the work I said that fluid influence studies which I carried out. So this is see, this is one mineral. If you focus, you'll get it. Yeah, just a bubble. What I said, fluid inclusion. This is nothing but fluid inclusion. Just with the help of the lasers, I mean uh, laser Raman spectroscopy. So we identified that this particular uh, uh, bubble or fluid inclusion contains carbon dioxide, water, and all other elements. Especially the water will fall between 3000. And these are the solar change, change studies. Yeah, please move. Yes, these are the beach rock. Okay. Beach rock work which I have carried out. Yes, you can move, you can move. So this I see where the pallant, I mean, uh, uh, fossils we have found and that beach rock. These are the migmated rock. I worked on migmated rock and this are uh, the sedimentary rock. Especially sandstone of Badani. Yes, please move. Next, please. This is a uh, uh, fluorosis, especially uh, uh, contamination of the water. Okay, and uh, remote sensing using uh, not remote sensing, this work. This is a basalt related work, which also got uh, published. Yeah, please move. Yeah, these are the uh, foraminiferal work. So this is also uh, published, recently published with the Indian Journal of Science and Technology. So next level is, uh, 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 yeah, this already, uh, yeah, please. Yes, next slide, please. That's all. These are the books, what I have published. Next, please. Yes, these are the publication. Yes. So uh, in this juncture, I would like to uh, once again I congratulate the continuer as well as the team members of this workshop. And uh, I thank you one, once again to all for giving me a chance to present a few of the common uh, geological geoscience work which has been carried out across the India as well as the work carried out me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, now we will move on to any questions. Yes, madam. Yeah. So, so you have a good number of applause, uh, sir. Uh, you have covered uh, various topics like. Uh, Thank you, madam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sediment sample covering and then analytical methods. What are the different analytical instruments and how the tsunami has affected the minerals and uh, beach rock fieldworks and magmatite fieldworks and so on, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, valuable support uh, in the uh, for accepting our invitation at the 11th hour. It's my pleasure, madam. It's my pleasure, madam. Thank, pleasure, madam. thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, sir, for being with us, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, madam. Bye, madam. Thank you, madam. Bye, Bye. Madam. Bye. Thank you, sir. Now I request uh, Professor Raghubabu, sir, to uh, have a sum up of the workshop. Thank you, madam. Good morning, all. Honorable Vice Chancellor in absentia, respected registrar in absentia, beloved principal, Professor K. Krishna Regularu, uh, my dear colleagues, Professor Kiroshan uh, uh, sir, Professor V. Sunita, Professor Jaira, uh, uh, sir, Dr. Renovas Gold, sir, Dr. Siddhiraju, students, research scholars. Uh, print and electronic media and uh, non-teaching staff a warm welcome to all 
to this uh, valid session uh, here is the long five day period comes to an end uh, it's been a great period of uh, five day uh, five day where a lot of uh, knowledge has been extended by eminent speakers on uh, on various various subjects on very very subjects uh, With, uh, with a shower of knowledge. So day one has started with uh, uh, Professor uh, S.M. Hussain sir, Head Department of Geology, Madras University, Chennai. He explained about the distribution of uh, astrocoda and their statistical aspects. Uh, implications on uh, paleo environment and high energy uh, marine uh, events and sediment uh, it's been a great lecture uh, scintillating lecture uh, and uh, hope all have gained the knowledge who are who are uh, interested in paleontology and uh, day two uh, was uh, uh, speaker on day two was dr a malapuri sir he is chief scientist ongc retired chennai he delivered lecture on uh, sequence biostratigraphy and uh, advanced tool in uh, uh, hydrocarbon exploration. So he, he has a great knowledge and uh, great experience on uh, hydrocarbon exploration. And he has shared all his uh, uh, all his experiences to, uh, to us in this talk. And day two uh, went with uh, Professor K. S. N. Reddy, sir. Uh, head of the Department of Geology, Andhra University, Vishakhapatnam. Uh, he, he 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 delivered a lecture on uh, recent developments uh, in uh, mineral exploration uh, with a special reference to organic fuels. So uh, uh, he is expertised in uh, organic fuel exploration, and uh, his lecture has uh, uh, showered a great knowledge uh, upon the participants. Day four, um, uh, the speech was given by, uh, lecture was given by Dr. V. Raghu sir, a scientist, uh, SF retired, Space Application Center, Andhra Pradesh. He, 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 had, he delivered a lecture on uh, hydrogeomorphological mapping using remote sensing and JS, JS technique. Uh, it, it is also a great lecture and filled with uh, great knowledge. Then uh, day five, So day, day four, the second lecture on day four uh, is uh, given by uh, Dr. D. Srinivas Sharma, sir, scientist CSRI, NJRI Hyderabad, Telangana. Uh, so he, he he explained about uh, geoscience opportunities and uh, possibilities. So uh, it is uh, uh, majorly useful for the uh, student community uh, who, who who are going out. Uh, uh, with uh, PG and PhD degrees, so it's a great lecture. Then day six, uh, day five, uh, talk six was given by uh, Professor K. Krishna Reddy sir, his principal, uh, uh, Dean Academy, uh, Dean uh, uh, Sciences School of Sciences, UGM University, Kadapa. He uh, he explained about the remote sensing uh, on uh, atmosphere. Atmosphere. Uh, it is also a good lecture. And he explained well about how remote sensing uh, will help in uh, predicting the atmospheric changes, uh, etc. So, uh, and day seven talk was uh, given by uh, uh, Dr. Babu Naluswami Naluswami Garu. Uh, he is lecturer in Central University of Karnataka. So he he delivered a lecture on uh, uh, geoscience research in uh, research institutions in India. And about the mineral wealth uh, uh, that could be that uh, that that is there, there are possibilities of exploration of uh, different minerals uh, and sampling techniques also he has explained very well and the student community particularly uh, may have gained a great knowledge uh, with this uh, talk so uh, this is all uh, about the um, so five day uh, five day workshop thank you for giving me the opportunity thank you very much. Sir.
thank you ragu sir for your uh, detailed overview of, about the workshop now it's a uh, duty to propose word of thanks um, yeah a very warm welcome again to you all uh, to the five day national workshop uh, on recent trends in geosciences 2023 in online mode uh, we sincerely thank professor g ranga janardhan garu honorable vice chancellor of yogavemana university uh, to accord permission to conduct this uh, workshop and we sincerely thank the professor yp venkat subbai garu registrar of yogavemana university kadapa to uh, have the financial grant in supporting the financial grant to this workshop and we sincerely thank professor k krishna reddy garu principal yogavemana university college and uh, dean school of sciences thank you very much sir and we sincerely thank all the eminent speakers of geosciences like uh, professor s m hussain garu department of geology madras university chennai and uh, professor k s reddy garu department of geology andhra university visakhapatnam and professor uh, dr nallap reddy garu chief scientist of ngc chennai and uh, dr v raghu garu scientist of space application center andhra pradesh and dr d shrinivas sharma garu scientist csr ngri hyderabad and also uh, the speakers like uh, professor krishna reddy garu and then balu uh, nallu uh, sami garu satel university of karnataka thank you uh, once again for, uh, for all your uh, valuable support and uh, for uh, enduring your knowledge uh, to the students and the scholars of uh, the department and also to all the participants who are there in the workshop they are very enthusiastic and uh, so really we are thankful all to you all sir for your uh, excellent knowledge in sharing your ppts and you have wonderful experiences your research and then teaching experiences in sharing us so thank you so much sir and i thank the conveners uh, the other convener professor raghubabu sir at department of geology and the other organizing committee members uh, professor g sudarshan raju garu chairman pos of the department of geology and professor n j raju garu and then uh, dr srinivas gaur garu and then uh, dr r siddhi raju academic consultant and all the research scholars of the department of geology who have uh, rendered their services in spreading this workshop and uh, i sincerely thank all the students and then the other participants and the delegates and the whoever have been actively involved in this workshop really sincere thanks to you all and hope you extend your cooperation in the future too and a couple of announcements uh, we are uh, actually we have uh, youtube links for all these uh, seven sessions we have uh, finished seven sessions on five days and uh, you can have uh, youtube uh, links and uh, we can send uh, the youtube link via google drive to your email hope you can find it and uh, if you have any queries you can uh, send an email so this is uh, uh, a very uh, good uh, gesture of spreading the knowledge through youtube links really we sincerely thank uh, all the eminent speakers of this workshop uh, really a sincere thanks to you all um, so thank you so much and uh, uh, hope in the future also we will conduct this type of workshops and uh, this type of uh, quizzes and then seminars and then uh, symposia and so on so i sincerely thank you once again all the participants thank you so much and uh, i thank you all, once again thank you all and uh, now it's a time for national anthem yeah Uh, any feedback from participants you please share your i think they are there any uh, any feedback from the participants you please uh, share your experiences or any lapses uh, he uh, sorry for the any lapses because uh, some internet issues and then some power issues are there uh, but hope we could do it uh, in a good way i guess and uh, yeah any other yeah you can type in the chat box if you would like to share anything we can do that all uh, everybody is thanking uh, yeah we should we also should thank you for your active participation yeah so if at all know this thing then we can go to, we can wind up uh, the session with the national anthem okay could you play the
Thank you. Yeah, you can leave the session. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Nalusami, sir. Sir, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, come to me in the cabin. Hmm.